I'm sure we all want to lead a healthy lifestyle and take care of ourselves and others around us. So it's important we also keep that in mind when we're creating our art. Oil painting has a reputation of being toxic and harmful, but what if I told you it doesn't have to be? In this video, I'm going to tell you how you can be more health conscious and eco-friendly by choosing non-toxic and less toxic materials when oil painting. I'll also talk about how to dispose of your art supplies and leftover paints, things like that, in a more eco-friendly way. And then towards the end of the video, I'll also talk about how to find vegan art supplies for those who are interested in that sort of thing. I'll pop some timestamps on the video so that you can easily skip to the parts that you want to see. And just a disclaimer, I'm in no way an expert on this topic. I've just got experience with oil painting I want to share what I found through my research and through my personal experience. So traditional art practices and materials can be toxic and harmful to our health and our environment but luckily we're seeing more and more companies create sustainable products and safer options. The renaissance masters didn't have to use solvents so why do we? Oil paints are a great medium to get into because they have slow drying times which means that you have a lot more freedom with them. You can blend them together really smoothly and they just allow more freedom overall but they also can be super intimidating to people People new to them because of all the solvents and the risks. Because oil paints are made up of pretty much oil and pigment, you can't clean them like you would a water-based paint like acrylic or watercolour. So cleaning any brushes or spillages would require solvents such as turpentine, mineral spirits, or some specific brush cleaner that's made by a paint company. Solvents like this give off harmful fumes that are really bad for you and the environment and you would need to sit in a well-ventilated room when using them. But even then, they can still be really harmful and cause you health issues. Also, when disposing of solvents, you must never pour them down the drain because it can cause lasting damage to the environment. Instead, you would need to put it in a suitable container and then take it to your waste disposal service so that they can dispose of it safely. It's also a good idea to wear gloves or some sort of barrier cream on your hands. This is because the pigments in oil paints can also be toxic. Solvents can cause your skin to dry out and then if you get pigments in your dry skin or any cracks in your skin it can get to your bloodstream which you don't want. So what's so toxic about pigments? In history there have been some insane ingredients in pigments such as arsenic in shields green and uranium oxide which was used to create like an orange glaze for ceramics. Those have since been banned but many paints still contain toxins and heavy metals such as cadmium, manganese, cerulean and cobalt. Now you can of course still use these pigments if you choose to you just need to know the risks behind them and take the necessary precautions and also make sure you're disposing of them in the correct way so they don't cause damage to the environment. Luckily most of the really toxic pigments have been replaced with safer alternatives. You can get a less toxic alternative to cadmium such as cadmium yellow hue and cadmium red hue. When imitation pigments like this use the word hue it means that the pigment is matching in terms of colour but doesn't actually contain the pigment. For example manganese blue hue wouldn't contain manganese, while cadmium red genuine would contain cadmium. However, just because a pigment doesn't contain the highly toxic cadmium doesn't mean that it's not toxic at all, it's just less toxic. So if the toxicity of a pigment concerns you, just make sure to do your research before using the paint and figure out what you're comfortable with personally. I'm not saying not to use toxic paints, that would be pretty much impossible, but just know what exactly it is that you're handling and make sure you take care when doing so. So when buying paints, always read the labels, look out for ingredients such as cadmium, lead, manganese, cerulean and cobalt because these are the more higher toxic pigments. <sighs> you still with me? Okay so now we've gone over why oil painting is toxic and now I'll tell you about all the non-toxic and less toxic alternatives out there. So if you still want to use traditional oil paints but you don't want to use the harmful solvents and mineral spirits that come with it, you can swap out your turpentine for walnut oil. Walnut oil actually eliminates the need for solvents when cleaning your brushes because it actually makes the paint slide straight off the bristles. So just dip your paintbrush in walnut oil and then wipe it on a rag or paper towel 
until there's no longer any paint coming off and then you're good to go. Apparently this also works with good old vegetable oil from the supermarket. There are also many non-toxic mediums on the market that you can use instead of the more harmful ones. For example, Gamblin's solvent-free gel medium, M. Graham's walnut alkyd medium, I'm not sure if I said that right. Linseed oil, walnut oil, as I mentioned before, and also zest it. These are just a few examples. There is also Gamsol by Gamblin, which is an odorless mineral spirit, so you don't have all the nasty fumes from like turpentine and other mineral spirits. However, this is still toxic, and I personally found when I used it that it left me with a sore throat all the time, so I stopped using this completely. Utrecht also offer cadmium free options which are made with organic blends, but still have the same opacity and consistency as traditional paints. There's also a small family business called Natural Earth Paint, and they create paints using pigments from nature, which is really cool. They also use recycled packaging and work in a solid powered facility. Another way you can cut out solvents and more toxic materials is by switching over to water mixable oil paints, which is something I've done recently. These paints can be cleaned away with soapy water, I wouldn't recommend using water to mix the oils as like a medium because this can make them go a bit of a weird consistency. I would really just use the water for cleaning the paint off the brushes afterwards. With water mixable oil paints, they've changed the... Uh, what are water mixable oil paints? According to Wikipedia, water miscible oil paint is oil paint either engineered or to which an emulsifier has been added, allowing it to be thinned and cleaned up with water. These paints make it possible to avoid using, or at least reduce volatile organic compounds such as turpentine that may be harmful if inhaled. Thank you. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah, so water mixable oil paints, um, they've had uh, an emulsifier added to them to change the way that they react to water. They are still oil paints, but they can be mixed with water, unlike normal oil paints. So as I mentioned, you shouldn't really use water to uh, thin down the paints, say if you wanted to do like a thin underpainting. It could range from oil paint to oil paint, but I find that the consistency does go a bit funky um, and doesn't really look that great. So there are many painting mediums out there that are specifically made for water mixable oil paints and these also do come in non-toxic forms which is really great. I'll pop a couple on screen right now to show you the ones I use but there are many different types and brands out there. But yeah overall I think water mixable oil paints are a great alternative to traditional oils. There's just a lot less risk with them in terms of health and environmental safety but like I mentioned earlier some of the pigments in the paints can still be toxic. Um, you just have to do your research and find out the pigments that are coming in the paints that you are purchasing. You can usually find out what pigment is in your paint tubes by looking on the tubes themselves. For example, on this Norma Blue here from Schmincke, it has it here on the side. And most paint tubes should have the pigment on there, um, but it will vary from brand to brand. So there are all the less toxic and non-toxic oil painting alternatives available. If you know of any more alternatives or have any of your own methods that work for you, feel free to share them in the comments below. I'd be really interested to see the methods that you guys use. Okay, now I'm gonna talk about how to dispose of art materials more safely in a way that has less impact on our environment. So unfortunately, a lot of the time, art can just be harmful to the environment. The way products are manufactured in themselves can be really damaging to the environment, but we as consumers can make sure that we're disposing of our waste materials in a safe way. The so paint scrapings and even paintings themselves shouldn't be thrown away in the usual waste disposal due to the toxic elements in the supplies that we use, and the solvents and other liquids that we use to clean brushes should never be poured down the drain. Instead, we need to store these in safe containers and dispose of them according to our local waste removal guidelines. So solvents and thinners, like I mentioned before, give off really harmful fumes. If you do use turpentine or any other mineral spirits, make sure you're in a well-ventilated room and don't leave solvents out in the open. So the best thing to do is to buy a toxic chemical container and use this to put 
oil waste solvents and rags of oil paint and things like that in. Then once you're ready to dispose it, take it to a local waste centre where they can dispose of it properly. This keeps the chemicals out of the environment and also seals away any harmful vapours. Also, don't rinse brushes in the sink, please. If you have a tub of turpentine, for example, and it's really cloudy and has a lot of paint in it, just put it to the side and wait a few days and all the particles will sink to the bottom and then you can reuse it. And this is also the same with less toxic things such as walnut oil, linseed oil and zest it. When you're done with your paint, scrape the paint off the palette with a palette knife, wipe the excess away with an old rag and store this in a safe container until you are ready to dispose of it. You can also pour a little bit of oil on the palette to clean away the residue of the rest of the oil paint and this is really good if you're using wooden palettes because it will actually help your wooden palette last a bit longer. The great thing about oil paint is that it is slow drying so it can have a couple of days before it dries out completely. Another way of extending this which I do myself is to put the palette in a fridge or a freezer. It prolongs the lifespan and stops it from drying out as quick. So if you have a break between paintings you're not going to have to mix all your colours all over again because they'll still be good. Another way of being eco-friendly with paints is to use the excess paints that's left over from a painting you've just finished to make another one. It could be an experimental piece or a practice piece, but any way that you can use the paint so it doesn't go to waste just really helps. And it's good for your practice and it's also good for your wallet. When it comes to painting surfaces, whether it's paper or canvas, always try and opt for organic if you can. Organic materials tend to be hemp, flax, bamboo or cotton. You could also use some discarded wood to paint on or buy secondhand supplies. Buying local can really help because it's reducing your carbon footprint and can also help keep costs down a little bit. So you can try and look locally first and if you really can't find what you're looking for then look online or even try and look for second hand. So yeah that's just a few little things that you can do to try and be a bit more eco-friendly in your art. Okay so we've gone over why oil paint is toxic and how to find less toxic and non-toxic alternatives, how to be a bit more eco-friendly with art supplies. Now I'm going to talk about how to find vegan art supplies. So being vegan is abstaining from eating, buying any animal products, um, this is in diet and also other manufactured goods, for example makeup, clothes and also art supplies. So I'm not going to go into huge detail about veganism in this video because that's not what this video is really about but I did want to touch upon ways you can find vegan art supplies and just a little bit of information on what supplies aren't vegan because I did a bit of research recently and I had no idea how much stuff had animal products in it in the art world. So choosing to abstain from buying animal products can actually be really beneficial for the environment because by doing so you're not contributing to the demand for these products and animal products do actually contribute quite a lot to global warming. So unfortunately, while a few art brands do actually list their vegan products on their websites, I found it's largely a case of having to do some Google deep dives and email some companies directly to actually find out if their products are vegan. Luckily, there are some websites online where some amazing people have collated lists of vegan art supplies. I'll link them in the description below. They've been a godsend. So art supplies traditionally have used many ingredients from animals. For example, paint Paints, mediums and even papers may contain bone char, gelatin, ox gall, rabbit collagen, eggs, carmine and shellac. Natural paintbrushes are made from the hair of sables, pigs and squirrels. Many higher end art supply companies use animal products because these companies have been around for hundreds of years and still use traditional recipes. But just because they're traditional doesn't necessarily mean they're better. There are many synthetic alternatives out there these days that do perform really, really well and are professional grade. So you don't necessarily need to use traditional art supplies. But again, this is completely personal preference. So it's up to you what you personally want to use. So something that I found out recently is that generally all inks and paints that are called ivory black contain the pigment PBK9 and this pigment is made from the ashes of burnt animal bones which is a waste product that comes from factory farming. There are however many alternatives. The most commonly used alternative is lamp black and carbon black, also Mars black 
but this can vary from brand to brand. So always check the pigment number on your paints. So a couple more ingredients to be on the lookout for. Carmine, um, it's a bright red dye, which is obtained from finely ground cochineal scale insects, and also oxgall, which is used as a binding agent in watercolor paint, and this is derived from cows. So an unfortunate thing that I found recently was when you buy paint sets, a lot of these sets do have ivory black in them. And a lot of the time when I checked, it was the pigment PBK9, which meant that these weren't sets that I was willing to buy, unfortunately. Also, it wasn't always just ivory black that was the problem. Sometimes the burnt umber, for example, wasn't vegan. So I was looking and looking and looking and trying to find any oil paint, water-based oil paint sets that didn't have any animal products in them, but I wasn't able to find any. And I sort of came to the conclusion like, okay, if you want a paint set from a specific brand, but you don't want to buy animal products, then you literally just have to buy the paints individually. And that's expensive, <laughs> that's really expensive. But luckily I came across a water mixable oil paint set from Schmincke and it is the Norma Blue set and they claim to be vegan and non-toxic and also allergy friendly. So that's really great and that saved me a lot of money because I was able to just buy a full set. So I was quite relieved to be able to find that but that's the only set I've found so far. Again, if you know of any, please uh, let me know in the comments below. And finally, another way of getting around the issue of being able to find vegan art supplies for the specific brand that you want, you can always buy secondhand. Um, it, again, this depends entirely on the person, what you believe in, but to me, personally, um, if you're buying secondhand, your money isn't going towards the manufacture of those products. So you're not contributing then, you're just buying secondhand off someone who no longer wants the product and you're preventing that from going to waste, which, you know, is better than ending up in a landfill. But again, that is personal preference. Um, so it's up to you to decide what you would be happy with doing. So that's everything for this video. Uh, I hope you found it informative and interesting. Oil paint is a really fantastic medium and I love using it. Once you get your head around it all and start to understand it a little bit more, it is a bit more straightforward. Um, it's just important to know about, you know, all the harmful things that come with it and just ways of keeping yourself safe, keeping the environment safe. So I hope that this video helped in some way. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'd love to try and help out further. Yeah, thank you very much for watching. If you liked this video, please consider subscribing. I'm going to be filming a lot of my art process and also some helpful videos. And uh, so stay tuned for that. And yeah, I think that's it. I'll leave you guys alone now. Bye-bye.